Hey, it's Jared with Data Tech, and today I wanted to talk to you about data and getting data to remote places for all of your connected devices. Now, I've been on a road trip with my family for 45 days. We started out in Central California, went all the way up into Northern Montana, and right now are in Northwestern Washington. It's actually raining outside right now. It's pretty crazy for the middle of July. But some of you follow me on my personal social media channels and you've been asking the question as to how I've been getting data for all of our connected devices. Uh, we're in a travel trailer and so we can't get standard home internet. I didn't wanna go the route of a satellite dish because those are really a pain to set up and really kind of tricky, especially if you are in areas with a lot of like tree coverage and stuff like that. So how were we going to get data to all of our connected devices. I mean, I have a bunch of devices myself, my iPad, my laptop, a couple of phones. My wife has an iPad and her phone, and my kids have their Kindle Fire or Kids Edition uh, tablets that need to connect every now and then. So what was our plan? Now, in bigger areas, like when we go into uh, a town and we're you know, maybe just barely outside of a town or a city, it's easy to get LTE signal to those locations because you're really close to cell towers and it's not really a problem. But when you're at like a state park or uh, a campground way out in the middle of nowhere where maybe there was cell coverage up near the street but down in the campground there is not, what are your options? Well, what I decided to do was to try and boost our cell signal using a cell booster. And so far I've had kind of mixed results and so I've wanted to talk about it. And some photos that I've actually posted of our trailer uh, to social media have shown kind of the boom pole up in the air. I'm showing you a photo of that now. Uh, with the antenna, I kind of did a, a makeshift setup because I wanted to make sure that this was going to work before I built something that was more kind of uh, fixed in place. Um, obviously, with a big boom antenna up in the air like that, you can't just leave it up all the time. It's actually quite windy out today and it seems to be doing okay just with the way that I have it set up right now. But if I was going to make this a permanent fixture on the trailer, I have an idea for some clamps that I can mount on the back of the trailer where I could put the post in those mounts and then have it up and then it would be really easy to take down. I don't really think that it's something that I would even want on the top of the trailer even if I could lay it flat. Uh, it just seems like maybe it would be too much uh, up there just if we drove over a branch, uh, a branch went over the top of the trailer, it would grab it and there'd just be no way to really make a tall boom pole that went way up in the air um, because you need to get this antenna up pretty high, especially if you're down in kind of a lower area. Um, like we've been staying in a lot of state parks near lakes and you kind of drive down into the lake and so you have to get that antenna as high as you can so that it can actually grab some cell signal. So I decided while we were in Kalispell, Montana to give this a try, I went down to a Best Buy and I bought a WeBoost system. Um, I bought the, uh, I think it's the model 47101. Um, I'm showing you pictures of it. You can get it off Amazon. I actually was gonna get it off Amazon, but I just ended up with a little bit of extra time that day and thought, you know what? I'm just gonna make the, I think it was like a 20 minute drive to a Best Buy. Um, picked up the model, uh, spent some time with it, and I've had some mixed results. So let me talk about what we're using for distribution of internet within the trailer. We're using this Netgear Nighthawk. Um, I actually purchased this recently because I had an older Netgear model um, that just I didn't think was really performing that well. I mean, it was, gosh, I don't know, it was probably like eight years old or something. It was early LTE um, hotspot days. And so I knew that there was better technology and that I was probably going to see better results if I upgraded and got a different device. So I ordered the Netgear M1, Nighthawk M1 off of Amazon, had it delivered to the campground that we were at, um, and got it all set up. And it worked great. But there were some instances when we were just far away from, just far enough away from a cell tower that we weren't getting that good of a signal. So there are actually two antenna ports in the bottom of this, and I got an antenna 
that you can attach to it, and I don't have it anymore because it wasn't very good. The antenna attaches to these little ports, and you can like stick it to the window, or you can hang it on something. Um, it only has leads that are about probably, I don't know, three feet in length, so you couldn't put it too far away from the MiFi device itself. And uh, looking at kind of the specs and stuff on it, it was only giving me about a two to three decibel boost, dB boost. Um, and that just wasn't uh, a good enough boost to give me any, any extended range um, from the, uh, the distance we were from those cell towers. So in looking into this WeBoost system, I was apprehensive because I know that we're moving towards 5G. I didn't want to buy something that was going to be, uh, you know, not any good in, in maybe six months or whatever. But realistically, 5G isn't going to be rolled out nationwide and definitely to the more remote areas for quite some time. So we're going to be relying on 4G and LTE for a long time. So that kind of knocked out that... Um, thing in my mind of like, I didn't want to spend $400 on something that wasn't going to be any good a year later. Uh, I decided to go with the, the model that I went with um, that boosts the signal up to around a 1500 square foot area. This is actually the model for a home or office. And I went with this model because this one boosts higher than the model that they make that's to, that goes in your car or something like that. The model that goes in your vehicle, that's more of a mobile model is meant to run off of 12 volt, but it's not going to send the signal as far. I wanted to be able to broadcast the signal throughout the trailer, so it didn't matter if my wife and I were in our room or if my kids were in the bunk beds or whatever, we would have a good boost on that signal. I also looked at the specs of the WeBoost unit itself and saw that the power supply is actually down converting from uh, AC 120 uh, volts down to five volts, just barely more than what a uh, charger for a cell phone is. And so I'm actually just going to make an adapter and then I can run it off 12 volt and the thing will run even if we don't have AC power, which is awesome because we're not always plugged into AC power. My trailer has solar on it. I installed solar. Uh, it has lithium batteries on it. And so uh, that something like that cell booster can definitely run for a long period of time. And since then, I've actually plugged it in to a meter and have uh, determined that it really doesn't use, it doesn't even draw that much power. It charges barely more than a regular cell phone getting a charge. And so I know that that booster can run off of the battery 24 seven and the solar would do more than enough to keep um, the batteries charged up. All right, so with this model, this uh, is a 1500 square foot model. It will boost up to a 60 decibel gain, a 60 dB gain. Um, but what I found is that, and it even says it, it even says it, if there's no signal at all, chances are it's not gonna boost your signal. If there's no, if your phone is not showing any signal at all, if you're not able to grab any signal, it's probably not gonna boost anything. There has to be a signal there to boost to begin with. But what I did notice is that as long as my phone had like one little bar, it didn't even necessarily have to be an LTE bar, the booster up on the boom would capture that and rebroadcast that signal in here with maybe two bars of LTE, which would be enough to give us just enough connection to get, um, you know, maybe some email checked. We actually were able to stream some Netflix for the kids one time. It's crazy how well Netflix works, even on very, very slow connections. Um, so, but where this really works well, where this booster really works is when you have maybe one bar or one and a half to two bars of LTE, which is good, but maybe you're, you're watching a streaming video and it's buffering a lot or, um, you know, watching YouTube videos and they're, they're kind of glitching out, um, or maybe even, you know, you have a couple of devices going at the same time. Uh, where this really shines is when you have like that bar or two, it will boost it to three, maybe even four bars. Uh, right now I have uh, four out of five bars on this Netgear device. Um, and without the boost, I only had maybe one to two. And uh, right now I have the transmitter antenna in our room which is behind the camera right now and so clear across the trailer straight to here 
I'm getting four bars. And actually, if I put this even closer to that antenna, I get sometimes even five bars of LTE, which is full signal strength. And if I went without this, so for example, if I disconnected from the uh, from the Wii Boost altogether, it would take me down to two bars. And I've actually ran some data tests, some speed tests, and it does uh, produce faster download and upload rates connected to Wii Boost, um, rebroadcasting that signal than it does uh, standalone without it. So with that said, is it worth the $300? I think that it is uh, because when I'm uploading, for example, uploading a YouTube video, which I shoot these videos in 4K, they're very large files. Uh, sometimes they're like six to eight gigabyte files. I want those to upload quick. Um, I also, if, I, if my kids are connected using their tablets, if my wife's doing something on her phone, I wanna be able to have enough uh, bandwidth left over for myself to be able to uh, do some work or something like that. And I need that extra bandwidth that I can get out of having more bars. When you have less bars on your signal strength, you're not getting that bandwidth. You may get a decent amount of speed for one device, but you're not gonna get enough for multiple devices. So that's where a device like this really shines. Um, so just to kind of recap what it does, it takes the signal using that antenna that you put outside, the antenna grabs whatever signal it can, uh, and the, the Wii Boost device itself boosts that signal and then rebroadcasts it inside of your home, your trailer, whatever it is, your vehicle. Um, and, uh, and so that's what it does. A lot of people think, oh, well, you're, you're connecting to the WeBoost device. You're actually not. It's really just rebroadcasting the signal uh, by taking it in through the antenna, boosting it, and sending it out through the transmitter antenna uh, within whatever area that you're in. Um, like I've, I've shown you, ours is in the room. I haven't even really set it up that well yet. Uh, I probably will after this trip and I have more access to my tools back home. I'll get it all mounted and I, I want to get the Wii Boost device like mounted and power running to it and a spot for the MiFi device and everything just kind of have it all contained nicely so I don't have to worry about setting it up and tearing it down all the time. The only thing I'll have to put up every time when we arrive is the antenna outside but I'll already have the cable ran and everything. It'll be perfect. Um, so maybe, uh, follow along on state of tech on Instagram, because, uh, if you're interested, I'll post some photos and maybe even later on do a recap video down the line. So, uh, if you have any questions about this setup and what I've been doing here, definitely ask them. Um, I tried to do my research on these devices before, uh, making my purchase and I found information, but not necessarily great information. I think it really comes down to, uh, just asking people who have experience with these devices, how they've used it, where they've seen it uh, benefit, and where they haven't seen it work. Like I said, it's worked really well for me when, when there's been at least one bar of signal. Uh, I have had it boost nothing to one bar of signal, but that, that boost of from nothing to one bar of signal wasn't really enough signal for us to do anything. I was able to download email. It took like about 10 minutes to download the email. Uh, but it wasn't enough to really do anything. I wasn't able to view any attachments or anything like that in the email. So um, you definitely have to have something to boost to begin with. But this works on all cell carriers. Uh, I have Google Fi and AT&T in here. Uh, I had a friend uh, when we were in Kalispell. Uh, it boosted his Verizon signal. And so I know that it works on uh, all the major carriers. And of course, they say that it works on the major carriers as well. So like I said, if you have any questions, ask down in the comment section below. I'll do my best to answer them. There's links in the description to the WeBoost system, to the Netgear, and all the stuff that I've used and talked about here. Um, and of course, I'll, I'll probably post more about it later also on stateoftech.net and maybe even do an installation tutorial once I officially kind of install it and set it up in our trailer. So that's going to do it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. Hope to see you back in the next one. Take care.